about consent in this idea of dressing it up in Christian language. I mean, you talk about how our culture gets outraged at a variety of these different things, and they don't realize what Christianity, how it's influenced their outrage today. In talking about consent, you start with understanding or helping people see the views of sexuality in the ancient world, specifically the Roman Empire, and note that our modern concept of sexual abuse would, be, would have been nonsense to a free, freeborn Roman man. Why? Because it's been taught to us by Christianity. I mean, the, the Me Too movement, um, as Tom Holland points out at the end of his book, Dominion, is a, a profoundly Christian impulse to have, because what do you call a Harvey Weinstein by the standards of other cultures. What do you call a Harvey Weinstein by the standards of, of Rome? Um, it's business as usual. Of, of course, um, men are more powerful and have more rights in their society, thinks a Roman. And why do we think there's such a thing as bodily autonomy? Why do we think that, that power differentials are there so that the powerful ought to serve the weaker? Why is it that we think that sex is so significant such that sexual violations are a uniquely egregious kind of sin? Why, why, why do we think that? Um, Kyle Harper wrote a, a fascinating book. It's one of the best books I've read in the last 10 years is um, From Shame to Sin. And he basically charts the sexual revolution. And when we think of the sexual revolution, we think of the 1960s and Kyle Harper says, no, no, you need to go back 1900 years before the swinging 60s. The sexual revolution that has absolutely transformed our world is the Christian sexual revolution in which Christ comes along and in Matthew 19 says, okay, um, the only place for sexual activity is one man, one woman for life. The doors are locked. No one gets out of that thing alive. That's, that's it. And if you don't want to do that, then there's this other option and it's chaste singleness for life, but um, that's it. <laughs> and, and Karl Harper has this beautiful phrase. He says, um, all, the diffuse, all the world's diffuse erotic energy was to be cramped into one frail sacred union. And the diffuse erotic energy that Karl Harper speaks of there um, he, he goes into in nauseating detail in From Shame to Sin, and, and he talks about how the, the, the Greco-Roman culture of the day um, was a sexual free-for-all if you were an elite man. An, an elite man had the right to possess the bodies of anyone who was his inferior, um, women, girls, boys, slaves, prostitutes. Um, brothels were state-sponsored. Um, a trip to the brothel would set you back the cost of a, a loaf of bread. Uh, there are 25 Latin words for prostitute. There's not a single Latin uh, way of referring to an adult male virgin. If you say virgin in Latin, you are referring to a, a woman because an adult male virgin is not a thing. In that color, just not a thing um, in that society. Um, male virginity like that is not, and and that's partly one of the cultural reasons why Jesus kind of uses in Matthew 19 the language of being a eunuch for the kingdom because because <laughs> like it's Christianity that kind of creates this category for chaste singleness, and it utterly it utterly transforms the world. So Kyle Harper's book From Shame to Sin talks uh, talks about it. Um, this other book by Joseph Henrik that I've already, already uh, mentioned, The Weirdest People in the World. It is that marriage and family program that is that has utterly transformed the world and and out of it has come from from this covenant union of male and female together for life. What happens is that the man is now tied to his woman and tied to his offspring in a way that nature doesn't tie him. A man is not biologically tied to his offspring in any way, not biologically, right? So he, he can have as many children with as many different women as, as he likes biologically. It, it is only culture that can constrain and restrain rampant male sexuality. And rampant male sexuality in the wild is not good for the flourishing of humanity. And Joseph Henrik, for instance, in, in his book, sort of charts all the reasons, just from a purely biological um, point of view and a sociocultural point of view, why we must restrain rampant male sexuality. And, and it's the Christian sexual ethic that had absolutely done that. 
to the point where the swinging sixties comes and tries to sort of let the genie out of the bottle again. It has to do this very pagan thing using Christian language. Okay. And use, and, and so in, in the first century, men were told to be as restrained in their sexual appetites as women had always been expected to be in the 1960s. Um, the equalizing goes in the other direction and, and basically through the technology of the pill and through abortion, the, the tie between sex and kids is cut. And so notionally what that then means is that women can now be as liberated as men had always been. And so in, instead of men being restrained, the idea is women become liberated and equalized through the sexual revolution. Um, and just notice the language again, you know, why is freedom such a, a huge value for us? And, and why is the equality of the sexes such a massive value for us? It totally is. And, and why, and, and we ought to be compassionate um, for women who have been repressed in lots of different ways and restrained and, and, and restricted from the flourishing lives that, that um, they might otherwise have led. But the idea that um, our liberation is best served by rampantly letting all, you know, ca casting all uh, caution to the wind in the, in the sexual realm um, is somehow for our flourishing. Well, we've had about six decades to show us the folly of that. Um, but what's fascinating is, is to say anything against the sexual revolution is, is, is often thought of as a way of um, demeaning, demeaning women in particular and demeaning these sort of culturally transcendent values of, of equality and compassion and consent. Um, when actually what has happened since the 1960s is through technology, we have let the genie out of the bottle and actually have allowed men to again lead the way in that that rampant exercise of of, of their own um sexuality and it is absolutely like run run riot through our society it's epitomized in people like harvey weinstein but the 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 first uh the, the our, our first inclination that harvey weinstein has done something wrong is not uh, a purely secular humanist progressive value the idea that harvey weinstein should have restrained his sexuality um that he should not have treated women as property he should he should not have used people but honored them and that sex is such a sacred thing that transgressing those boundaries is a particularly egregious form of evil that instinct that that he has gone wrong in those ways that that is profoundly christian